welcome. So let me introduce myself. I'm Dushan. I'm primarily software engineer. I'm working uh, for various startups for almost six years. And my like private stuff I do is I like to research about privacy, of course, and human rights. So this talk will not gonna be anything the like tech talk. It's gonna be like philosophical thinking and some advice is how to protect yourself in a digital world. Okay, so in a software world, this 2.0 probably means like some newer version, incremented version, better version. And in a terms of world, um, it means like a better improved world or the world we are heading to. And it's a digital world. So, and what is digital world? The digital world is basically a place where we are all digital citizens. We communicate with our friends and family through social media. We buy stuff online with credit cards with one click. We work remotely from our homes or from Thailand, whatever. And basically we don't have um, any kind of engagement with this physical world. So this is my thought of what World 2.0 is. And we are still transi transitioning to that position. Uh, most of the things are doing good, except one thing. And one thing is our privacy. So in this physical world, we have like houses. And for 1,000 years, they, they just were used for like protecting from bad weather. But now, um, like we are living in 21st century, they are um, serving us to keep our lives ours only. So basically, privacy is ability to choose what do you want to share with others. So what do you want to keep behind the closed doors and what not? In the digital world, on the other hand, you have like you're chatting with someone and you're not sure where that goes. I mean, it obviously reached the second end, but what, what's in the middle? What's going on there? So let me tell you a personal story. Um, friend of a friend, and that friend is sitting right here. So friend of his friend is um, um, wanted to visit the uh, United States uh, to visit his brother and find some job there. And as some of you may know, it's very hard to get a uh, work visa for the United States, at least from the people coming from Serbia. So he took a risk and like, just went there on tourist visa, went to work there. Uh, and when he reached uh, J JFK and custom officers, uh, they basically like do the same to check questions, uh, where are you going, what are you doing? And he was kind of paranoid a bit. So they took him to a separate room, asked him a bit more questions. And like after a few, like 30 minutes, let's say, they brought him like a transcript of like 200 pages of chat transcripts with, uh, between him and his brother about their basic lecture proved him that he wanted to stay there illegally and work there illegally. So um, I don't think that's like the good thing, what he tried to do. But I, I'm sure that most of you agree that what that 200 pages is like awful. I mean, anyone can like took your chats and like use it against you. So this table over here is um, it's um, report from Facebook. Uh, you can find all the data on this link below. And this is like uh, government requests that each of the governments, you have all the countries, mm -hmm. send to Facebook for the data. And this data request basically represents like, I don't know, uh, I need just a phone number of that customer. It's not showing the web page. I just need that. And this user account requested, it's basically something like a master password so you can log into that account. And for Slovenia, it's like 14 for data requests and 15 for user account requested. And this period is uh, from January to July 2016. For Serbia, the number's a bit like, bigger. It's 45, 70. And for United States, of course, 23K and 38K. I also have reports from Google, um, the same metrics. Uh, you can find all the details below on this link below. So, Basically, uh, as we can see, Slovenia has uh, like 20 data requests and 90 user requ account requests. 
Third, we are tree tree. I don't know what's going on there. Probably we are using Bing or something like that. <laughs> uh, and United States, of course, very high in numbers. So if you think about it a bit, uh, I mean, anyone can use that. So some other things, companies that are using our data. So Amazon Echo, probably everyone heard of that. Uh, it's basically a little device, so you can ask, uh, give him voice commands and like, what's the weather? And he's like, hey, it's like 15 degrees in Slovenia, something like that. So basically that device can record uh, all the time and like send the, that, your voice, your conversations online. So Amazon, if, if they want, and they're probably gonna use it sometimes. Um, they have like a bunch, bunch of data in, in, in format of recordings, human voice conversation stuff. Pokemon Go is a good example. I attended one, uh, like, uh, it was kind of small meetup, so guy uh, who worked as a contractor for Next, I think it's called a company, or something like that. Uh, when, when you wanna catch a Pokemon, for example, you open your camera, like point to the, Pokemon, and then they pick like some random points uh, on the from your camera, from your streaming camera, and upload it. So they use it. Uh, by the way, that company is owned like 51% by Google, like father company, something like that. So they send that points, and they they can recreate the like 3D representation of our physical world. Uh, of course, it's not not sure what's going on with that, but. Like in the future, if you have more of these apps, they can probably like create a world identical to ours, so robots can like just go and learn on that digital world instead of this physical. And third example is Google Photos, for example, if someone is using that. Uh, they have, if you share your like photo publicly, they can use it for their own product or whatever. They say it's just for product, but probably it's not. So, on the other hand, we have some good companies. And uh, let's go back. Uh, in the United States, for example, you have a law which doesn't allow companies to say if some of the government agencies asked for some data. So they came up with this. It's called Warren Canary. So in uh, terms and conditions, they have one like point. It's, it's Warren, Warren Canary, of course. And it says just this. The FBI was not here. So Basically, they cannot say that, hey, FBI took my data, but they can say, hey, FBI didn't took my data. So that's what they do. They just put this in a terms and condition. And if you cannot find this one, probably someone asked for the data. So I, there was like some internal controversy about Reddit and stuff like that. So they removed this from their terms and conditions. And again, most of the people say, I have nothing to hide, which is, Probably true, we're not like criminals or everything, but we, we want to keep some things for our, ourselves or just to share it with certain people. So as some guy from the internet said, there is a saying we need, but uh, he said, I know what you do in the bathroom, but you still close the door, which is, you know, it's true. It, people often confuse privacy and secrecy, and secrecy, basically, if, if you really hide something like, uh, keep it secret probably because it's illegal or bad, you know, that's the kind of thing to keep secret. But privacy, I mean, you, I, I just saw like a uh, few minutes ago in a man bathroom, you, you know, sorry, it's probably a man joke, but um, they're like, uh, still most of the people use cabins instead of, because they like care about their privacy. Um, and of course, uh, like many of the chat apps have private channels and everything, so it's obvious that people need to communicate like in some close groups. On the other hand, like why is this important is that companies are using this data kind of against you because they aggregate that and like create things that you want to buy that, uh, I don't know, um, sell it to the other company, give it to the governments, whatever. And you can think about it that in 10 years, they can use it against you. If you try to work illegally in the US, of course. So, can you protect ourselves? Well, mostly yes. 
here's the thing. We need to encrypt everything that's possible, <laughs> whatever is possible. So I'll just go a bit technical about this. What's encryption? Um, as we can say, encryption is a process of encoding a message or information in such a way that only authorized parties can access it. Uh, and why you should be confident about it? It's because there is a high mad in it. So for all the computers in, I don't know, in the world, it's very, very hard to crack some of the like, good passwords, like long random passwords. So you should feel confident about it. And another thing is uh, these asymmetric keys, uh, they're commonly used in encryption. Uh, it's often, they're often referred as public and private key. Probably most of you heard about it. So basically, you have your public key, which you give to everyone. And you have your own key. So when you encrypt things with your private key, everyone with a public key can decrypt it. So basically, that's how it works. Um, so I'll just go through some list of the, the things and explain uh, how to improve that. So passwords. Uh, does anyone hear, did anyone hear about this runner 2016 or know what it is? So this is the password of uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, John Podesta. So they leaked the, the password and just mail, I don't know, some two mails, gave it to WikiLeaks, and then all the bad stuff came out. And obviously influenced the campaign very much. So what we, what we can do, I mean, if you're running for president or not, whatever, but what we can do about it to improve it. So just generate long random passwords. Uh, most of the people, for example, my mother is using her birth date for her Facebook password. She, insane. And now he, he has that internet card to buy things on AliExpress. It's very bad. So just generate long random passwords. Um, I personally use this key pass. It's, it's basically can generate passwords for you, keep it, encrypt it, and you can encrypt database file. You can share it with uh, via Dropbox if you want. That's what I do, for example. So you need to know just two passwords. Uh, for the key pass and for the Dropbox, if you share it. If you use it on one computer, there is no need for external services. Another one is hard drive. Let's say uh, someone steals your laptop. And of course, if, if, it's not, if that person is not professional, that's going to happen. They'll probably just like uh, erase wipe data and install the new operating system. But let's say someone want, on purpose stole your laptop, so he can just pull your hard drive put it like in a, even if he doesn't know your passwords and stuff, put hard drive, put it like as, a, as an external hard drive, some other computer and connects all your data. So what we can do about it is, of course, just encrypt it. Um, it's very easy to encrypt hard disk drives. Um, if you're using Mac OS X, you have, uh, they have uh, file vault, it's called. Uh, so it took like uh, maybe a few hours to do everything. On Windows, there is a BitLocker, and on Linux, there are a bunch of tools. So, while, but these hard drives, I mean, for flash drives, of course, not if you're just uh, copy pasting movies, but if you have some sensitive data on them, just encrypt it. So, that's it. Just encrypt your hard drives. Chat apps, um, yeah, Skype, Vault 9. That's, um, that's also a document released from Wiki. Uh, WikiLeaks, it says that uh, some of the agency, agencies in the United States can monitor Skype conversations in real time, which is awkward. And that purpose, of course, use encrypted chat apps. What else? So I personally like Signal. Uh, it's uh, developed by Open Whisper Systems. That's some like lunatic crazy guy from Silicon Valley, uh, all into privacy. So. Uh, code is open source, which is good. So you can check what's going on in there if you're a developer. If you're not, you can pay someone to do it. Um, so you can check the code. Uh, if you want to add some fancy buttons and whatever, you can do it because it's open source. So why not? Uh, also, like WhatsApp, Viber, I'm not, I'm not sure what people here are using. But they are all like, encrypted. But my belief is they are encrypted as long as you trust the vendor. Because Facebook is owning WhatsApp. I'm not sure. I won't bet on that one. Browsing. Everyone uses browser. So what we have there is um, someone can kind of spoof on your router 
let's say you want to try to log into some, I don't know, bank account, someone can steal your passwords. So it's very important to use HTTPS. And there is, there is a, a Chrome extension, HTTPS everywhere. It basically forces you to use HTTPS. Then some other uh, useful tools is this privacy badger. It basically kills all analytics from the sites. Google Analytics, Mixpanel, Intercom, whatever you want. So companies cannot track your, like, your behavior, what you're doing on their website. Another one is self-destructive cookies. So basically destroys cookies and don't, don't allow other libraries to interact with cookies from the other domains, stuff like that. And of course, everyone uses Google. Uh, it's, I, they have the best technology, of course, but they are like tracking whatever, whatever you're doing on the internet. So basically, um, if you're a programmer, DuckDuckGo would work just as fine for everything. If you search for problems, for whatever, it would work just fine. But, and you can use Google on occasions when DuckDuckGo is like really not a thing, good thing for that search. So emails, uh, last year there was like a uh, Yahoo breach and they like released a billion of accounts, I think. It's not billion, probably it's 100 millions, not sure how many. So I, mean, I think web clients are, uh, web email clients are really good because uh, they rip off all the work you need to do to set up email on your computer. But for this one, uh, if anyone heard of ProtoMail, um, suggest that one. Uh, they're basically located in Switzerland. Why is that important? Because you know everybody keeps their money in Switzerland, so nobody will do anything aggressively about them. So uh, that's cool, and they cannot influence the law. That's good. So they have two passwords, actually. They have a password for their account, and you have a password for mailbox. So you can encrypt your mailbox, and then it's cool. If someone uh, takes their like database with your passwords, you still have your password for your mailbox. And of course, uh, there are some other ways what you can do, uh, TrueCrypt and PGP. So TrueCrypt basically allows you to create a folder in your hard drive. You can encrypt it and then put everything what you want there. Then uh, you just unmount it and it's just a file. No one can open it. If you want to mount it, it will prompt you for a password. So it's basically encrypted all the time. And PGP is company. It's called uh, Pretty Good Privacy, I think. So they, they, have, a, oops, they have a system um, where you can, on Mac, the application is called PGP Suite. But I'm not sure they have apps for Windows and for Linux as well. So basically, they cre create uh, public uh, and private keys. And they upload public key to their like, uh, server. So if someone wants to send uh, en encrypt with the private key and encrypt with the public key of the other person, he can just look for the public key on their list. And it's pretty convenient. And in the end, Balance it not getting too, too paranoid. The uh, purpose of this talk was just to give a heads up what's, what had happened and what can you do about it if you want. Uh, so I'm, it was not to see some of you running and yelling, uh, we'll be watched and stuff like that. So that's it. Thanks. Uh, in the slides, I, I saw the last pass to, to avoid wine. Uh, yeah, they, they actually had the leak uh, recently. I think a month ago. So you can, if you store password there, there was a leak, so you can just use password from the, and I'm not sure how they are storing that, but they are probably a startup not very well, did good job on, sorry? Oh, sorry. The question was, um, uh, he saw on slides that I suggest not to use LastPass. So a month ago they had a leak with the passwords and stuff. So I'm not sure in their technical. So what about the hardware? The hardware can uh, manipulate. Manipul manipulate data, of course. Uh, so that's the same as I suggested Signal, because it's open source. But then again, compiler can have malicious code in there, right? So it's very hard to, to balance, especially for a uh, like normal user. I mean, 
I'm actually not sure about like the right thing to do about it right now, unless you create your own hardware. Uh, the question was uh, um, which VPN I like suggest. I used uh, Bear VPN. That's it. Bear, Tunnel Bear. So that's the one I use. I'm not sure about the others. Uh, sorry, the question was how do you handle uh, terms and conditions? I agree, or because most of the people don't read that, just click. 